Welcome to Miss Martin Muses. Welcome to Miss Martin Muses, where we muse upon what makes me laugh, makes me cry, makes me happy, makes me sad, or just really ticks me off. Well, today we're going to talk about something that makes me very, very happy, and it is The Two Towers, J.R.R. Tolkien's book, The Two Towers, and especially Two Towers with the, not Return of the King, for fuck's sake, we're talking about Helm's Deep, we're talking about Helm's effing Deep. We are joined today, as always, by Princess Rennie. Hi, Teresa. Thank you so much for having me on. This is my absolute favorite book of the series, so I'm excited, and I love Helm's Deep, so can't wait to get into it. Yay! Woo! And joining us from the future, joining us from the future, all the way from Norway, it is the one, the only, the Viking himself, Steve Kenobi. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to... Do a deep dive in this into this chapter helmed by Miss Teresa. It's going to be fun. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> and I want to say hi to our guest. We have Snort of Rather Chat, Snort of Poopus Cuber. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. We have Huffle Mama. Why, thank you for coming. Thank you. Hey, Welcome Huffle to Miss Martin Muses. Um, everyone saying, being nice to each other. We have Unlocking Lore after the weekend. Hello, everyone in the chat. Yes, Unlocking Lore, none other than the Geeky Crochet. She has just debuted an Aragorn doll, an Aragorn doll that she has Ooh. created. So um, please, if you don't already, follow her on Twitter and follow her on YouTube. We have the, uh, oh, we the, uh, the Return of the Pin. <laughs> that's a different type of movie or book <laughs> <laughs> hello Joaquin Stark gosh darn it and people are saying hi to Rennie and Stieg we have Keck44 thank you for modding today Keck. Darius Munchausen yes hello hello welcome to Miss Martin Muses today Aww. and as always I also welcome all the animals that like to come in. We so far the only animal that's shown himself is Snort Peepus Cooper. We have a polar bear, but often we get cats and many other creatures. Guinea pigs, guinea pigs. If Tommy shows up, oh, oh, you right at me. Well, of course Aww. I did. Well, well, your profile picture kind of gives it away there because that, of course, is uh, from your Twitter. That's a an Ahsoka doll, I believe, that you have created. Yes, it is. I love to crochet, and eventually we're going to try to get together on a stream where we're going to show off our geeky crochet. Though you might be a little horrified by my special rendition of Baby Yoda, but it was very popular with the man who got it for his birthday. It was uh, a, right. a perfect rendition of Baby Yoda. <laughs> li little shit deserved it. <laughs> Did you barbecue him or roast him? Not well. I um, I had him. Uh, post murdered uh, where someone <laughs> put a hatchet in his head oh no yeah and he was dead he was dead baby yoda it was for ryan kennel for his birthday because he he is of the belief that me making cute baby yodas is, is the most evil thing another human being could do so that'd be a fun little gift to give him for his birthday <laughs> That's cute. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was he was still cute, even dead and bloodied with a hatchet in his head. Yes, it will be awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be incredibly girly. Stieg will probably be a million miles away. Uh, it will be a lot of talk of yarn and geekness and all of that. But today we are here to talk about the Lord of the Rings, the book, The Lord of the Rings, most specifically the Two Towers. Hello, Peacat. You see, I told you the animals were going to start Peacat. coming out of the closet. Hello. Well, today it is the Battle of Helm's Deep, a chapter I just got done rereading this morning. Holy crud. Is it fun? Is it fun? Is it fun? I really get patriotic if i was a rohurim i would have stand up and sung god bless the rohan or something it was made me proud to be a rohan person even though i'm not yeah no i agree well, i agree uh 100 yeah, now you've said rennie that this is your favorite book it, yes so i didn't know if you wanted to weigh in really quickly was it because of things like helm steep what particularly makes this your well favorite? 
it's kind of like oh i hate to make this comparison because for me like star wars is dead but it's kind of like the empire strikes back of lord of the rings where you know not everything's resolved but you know it's got a lot of good conflicts um you've got the whole you know say it in going from being sick to being kind of cured so to speak um you know gandalf coming back as gandalf the white and then the rohirrim um you know basically conquering um conquering what's it called the the orcs or the urukai um of course with gandalf's help and then the ents going to war i mean that's just such cool stuff and um i don't know it's just you know it's still tense at the end because you don't really know what's going to happen and i want to see at the end of this book they kind of you know talk about frodo and sam going up the secret stairway so you kind of see like the gathering before the big battle so to speak in a way mm -hmm. um but yeah, it just leaves a lot of tension, but a lot of good stuff happens. A lot of really cool stuff happens. So yeah, all of it together just makes it a great book for me. Oh, well, there we go. We heard it from the lady herself. We heard it from the lady herself. There's many things to love. Uh, I, I would like to point out something because I, I, I missed the last uh, episode. Yes. Um, the uh, A lot of people uh, I've seen criticize the fact that Gandalf is returning, it's like a deus ex machina and what have you. It is foreshadowed in uh, the first book because when Frodo looks into the mirror of Galadriel, he sees a white robed man that he thinks looks like Gandalf. He's actually oh, yeah. seeing the re return of Gandalf right there. Also, the same thing happened to Glorfindel. You have to read the Silmarillion to, to get that one, though. That's but, a good call uh, out. It, it is foreshadowed. Well, there you go. You heard it here first, and a very good point. Uh, Darius, Darius Munchausen, he's sharing here. He hasn't yet led the orderings. I just bought the books a couple of months ago. Oh. Well, and, hey, Darius. Good to see you here and definitely read. So, yes. so good. Yes. Welcome and welcome to the Lord of the Rings. If I were you, I would put down everything and go and read it as fast as you can. You have such a treat in front of you and my envy because you can only go back once and read this for the first time, rather. So cherish it, cherish it. That's a very good moment. And we have had the Sultan has also joined us here. Well. The Two Towers. My favorite chapter is yet to come up. Or not my favorite chapter, rather. My favorite character. And it will probably be a three-day stream because we're going to study every syllable of what Faramir does. But we are not at Faramir. We are at the Two Towers. And more specifically, we have arrived at Helm's Deep. And how does this chapter start off? How does this chapter start off in Chapter 7? The sun was already westering as they rode from Edoras and the light of it was in their eyes turning all the rolling fields of Rohan into a golden haze. I think that's a great introduction to this because it's starting with the setting of the sun and the battle is going to go through the night. For foreshadowing uh, darkness I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. This man is a fracking genius. Some things will happen, of course, before them, but that is the way that we started off. They are riding out. They are riding out. And they don't intend to go straight to Helm's Deep, if I'm correct. I, I was, as I was rereading it, they, they were get, they got a message from you know the the people from Helm's Deep telling them about how much it sucks to be them and please come get us and Amor's like then let us be swift let us drive through such foes as are already between us and the fastest there are caves in Helm's Deep where hundreds may lie hid in secret ways led up <coughs> hence from the hills um, so if I'm correct yeah that it so yeah, they were heading towards Helm's Deep. I'm sorry, Maya Maxima Culpa. It there's just a little more details as they're doing it. So I just love the way that 
he uses time in this chapter because he's like, a slow time passed. And it was yeah. now past midnight. The sky was utterly dark. I don't know. Help us out here, Stieg. What do you think about the Helm's Deep and how we get into this? Um, my memories of it is very colored by uh, the movie. Yes. You know, because I've probably watched the movies more than I've read the books. And it's, it's been quite a while since I uh, since I read the the uh, the books, too. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I'm so sorry, you guys. Like, today is the day they've decided to do yard work right in front of my place. So mm -hmm. it's a bit loud. So I'm getting a little distracted oh, and irritated. We, but <laughs> we, we can't hear it, though. Oh, well, that's yeah, we're, good. We're fine here. Yeah. So, no, we're all good here. Yeah. But from what I understand, the movie also confused us a little bit because they kept switching back and forth what Aragorn was supposed to be doing and saying and what Theoden was supposed to be saying. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like the movie went for a little bit more drama. Mm -hmm. um that's me personally i feel like it did and especially once you get to like almost battle time mm -hmm. because you know it didn't really go down the way that they showed it in the movie i mean yes it was definitely a big army versus a small one but the, not everything happened that they said happened and um i feel like they just kind of over dramatized it but at the same time i understand why so you could feel the pain of these people or so you could have little points to rejoice and be excited about but man when you read the book i mean it's it's a freaking beating and you know it's it's sad and then you feel for these people that are going there but at the same time and you feel for the people that are stuck there but at the same time you know once you know it's finally the battle's finally done and over you're like oh yes thank goodness you know that's a yeah. really tough chapter to read at first yes and before we actually get there, when they decide that they're going to ride in all haste to Helm's Deep, Gandalf, of course, <laughs> has to be so helpful and go, ride, Theoden, ride to Helm's Deep. I'll be there later. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Have a good time. <laughs> Keep well till I return. Await me at Helm's Gate. Farewell. So the whole thing in the movie which was the plot hole, as Stieg often points out, about look to the east. He didn't say look to the east. He said, array me at the Helm's Gate. Farewell. Yeah, and then the he book, was gone. They say look to the east. But uh, if you look at the movie, right? The uh, <clears throat> They arrive from the left, and the gate of Helm's Deep is facing uh, south, if you look at the map, which means they don't arrive from the east. They arrive from the west. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Even though it shows the sun rising behind Gandalf's head yeah. or whatever. It's still, in, <laughs> it's still in the west if you look at the map. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. That's a good call out. And perhaps one of my favorite little lines after Gandalf says, farewell. One of the, it says, what does that mean? Said one of the guard to Hama. <laughs> Because, you know, they're suddenly kind of panicking, whether they say they are or not. They're just like, oh, crap. Why did he leave us? You know? Yeah. Because that <laughs> was your, like, basically, your trump card was Gandalf. Or at least it, I feel like that's how they felt. You know? Yeah. And then Wormtongue, were he here, would not find it hard to explain, said the other. True enough. But for myself, I will wait until I see Gandalf again. And maybe you will wait long. That gives us some tension. First of all, where the hell is Gandalf going? <laughs> and then yeah. what's, he, what's going to happen when he gets to the gate, get to the helm? Oh. Um, another thing that makes this chapter kind of fun is we just go right headlong into it. It's not a matter of let's sit around for about an hour and sit and talk and wave high and have a little bit of despair. <laughs> melodrama they get there and it's time it is showtime kids yeah like yeah. it it pretty much hits the ground running mm -hmm. 
and and uh, let me see what it says. This is also where they have the competition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. Which, which I love said, it so Gimli much. wins. Gimli oh, yes, wins <laughs> but barely. <laughs> <laughs> so cute i love that yeah <laughs> yeah it's like gimli stood leaning against the breastwork legolas sat above the parapet fingering his bow <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, and like all the ladies are like you can finger my bow you do <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh boy okay so suddenly we got into porn all right, all right. And <laughs> just as you said it lethal lightning showed up oh are you kidding oh, me no, no. <laughs> no i'm not no, kidding lethal. perfect timing <laughs> yeah, yeah, well lethal you can do that too shows up. that sounds about right <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> welcome to Miss Martin Muses. Oh my gosh. Yes, what smut did you walk into? <laughs> he did one. <laughs> oh gosh, I think they're all talking about they're all high. <laughs> I don't oh, know. <laughs> this is the best chat ever. Oh, I love uh, it. Yeah, there, 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 lots of stuff going on. Um, I, I'll give you all a little more love and a little more attention. But Elf Smut, Elf, Elf Smut Lethal Lightning is the best kind of smut. Oh, yeah. Elves are hot. <laughs> not, <laughs> if they have those, not if they have those the stupid long donkey anime ears, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, <clears throat> yeah, not so that's something, too. <laughs> but Lethal, oh, he's being very generous. He doesn't kink shame. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Lethal Lightning. All the ladies are like, you can finger my bow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, Lethal, I don't know. Are you a Lord of the Rings fan? I, uh, you're, you always uh, have an open invitation. I'd plow the sh out of Galadriel. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. Is it, um, what's her name? Um. The lady that plays her, isn't she a New Zealander? I didn't think Aussies like New Zealanders. Uh, I don't know if she's New Zealand or Australia. I'm, uh... I'm, I'm, I'm guessing as long as she doesn't speak, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh! Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. And then this is where Aragorn says, unlike in the movie where they give it to Thea, <laughs> come, this is the hour when we draw swords together. <laughs> <laughs> and of course i have that meme oh, okay. where they're sitting there then drawing swords and yeah that was cute their stuff together amor amor and aragorn sprang through the door there are men close behind the two swords flashed from the sheath as one guthwin i'm gonna butcher the pronunciation said amor for the mark and Earl cried Aragorn. And Earl for the Judah Day. And I just love it that they have a chance to just start shouting random things as they're jumping through. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, th there's another difference between the book and the movie there. Because Aylmer is at the battle. At yes. He well, doesn't also, arrive afterwards, like in the movie. Aragorn doesn't have Andoril yet. He has a he doesn't get it until the return of the king in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the dude from The Matrix shows up with it. Oh, Bree's not here, says Subhuman. <laughs> Welcome, Subhuman. Uh, hey, Subhuman. <laughs> you know, if they were to make this nowadays, maybe Bree would be Galadriel. So oh, that would be his. Gross. I would hate that casting. But no, for... if, if, if they had made it today, uh, Galadriel would be played by Leslie Jones. Oh, oh don't you gross. dare. <laughs> or maybe she would play Mary or Pippin. I don't know. But oh. you know I'm you know I'm not wrong oh, no. though. Oh dear. Why? Oh. Why, God, why? <laughs> oh dear. No, we're all in favor of this. A lot of you crying, but but that but that would be the Gladriel that Lethal would definitely want to wow. <laughs> Uh, Sultan Al Faim says, "Swords swinging, yes. I'll take swinging swords any day too." As you do when you're running. 
because <laughs> Aaron, Aaron isn't. PJ got that all wrong. Yeah, they wanted to have some little melodrama there. Uh, Huffle Mama says, give me a year and a hundred of my kin, and I would make this a place that armies would break upon like water. I love that. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lisa Lightning says, Dave Patusta, she played <laughs> Bill. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Unlucky lore. That would probably burn the whole series. <laughs> Kick 44. Bree would be an int. No one would notice her. No, oh, damn. Forest. That's a good one. <laughs> I mean, her toe looks like a log. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's pretty much a plank acting wise, so it's all good. Yeah, um, subhuman Elliot Page would so that's play why Frodo. The, the acting is oh. wooden. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <it's> wooden. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and then the thunder happens. Uh, the thunder was rumbling in the distance. Now the clouds were torn and drifting, and off they go. They're fighting. Two said Gimli, patting his axe. Two said Legolas, I have done better, though now I must grope <laughs> for spent arrows. Oh my gosh, he's groping for spent arrows. <laughs> yeah, he's literally stroking the shafts. Uh, <laughs> <get a> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I love the... Uh, <laughs> I love the competition. One thing I will say um, that's very different and very, um, very jarring. If you haven't read the books and you've only seen the movies is the elves do not come to their aid. It's only the men, you know, of Rohan and then the fellowship guys. That's pretty much it. So yeah. you don't really get that like, you know, sense of like, yes, help is here. It's just like, oh shit, they're about to get pwned. So yeah. You know, it's it's very it's very different. And I had forgotten that when I reread read the books after watching the movies, I'm like, oh, geez, I forgot. And their army sounds so much smaller and it just seems so bleak and hopeless. And yeah, it's, it's a tough chapter to read, you know, when you first get into it. Yeah. Also, um, in the book, Erkenbrand is the one who, who arrives, who technically is a bit of a deus ex machina because he's pretty much there and then leaves again you know yeah. so i think in the movie it actually fit better with aomer yeah arriving i think at least so we knew too. who it was you know well and it, it gave it more drama and like yes they're here to save the day you know yeah so because it was a bigger character and it was like okay he's a good warrior he's a good fighter we know that this is gonna end well finally even though it seems really, really bleak for a couple minutes. Absolutely. And the, it's always darkest before the dawn. Lethal says it's 5 a.m. I'll be lurking. You Aww. can lurk with me anytime, Lethal. Anytime. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, yes. he's so sweet for dropping by. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I think he's a little leak. He's, he's the just sitting there the lurking. <clears throat> he's sitting there lurking off to Galadriel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and yes, evidently I was mistaken. Kate Blanchett is an Aussie, so my apologies. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, my boyfriend's gonna kill me because he's an Aussie. Be like, really? You didn't know that? <laughs> it's like, well, we don't know everything. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, <God. I> know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, Huffle Mama says the fortress of Helm's Deep was the only reason they survived the battle. They said Helm held it all by himself. Yes. Yeah. Well said. She's so good at her knowledge of the books. Yeah. Snort Poopa says Erkenbrand, Gandalf, and some angry ents and horns. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, oh man. I've had to put the. This is our little ship, the Rose and the Lightning. Oh, that's you, you know, cute. makes you makes you wonder about the ent though. Uh, the the ents. I mean, which branch of the army were they? <laughs> <laughs> the wooden branch. No, just kidding. That was oh awful. my gosh! I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, got that. Well, at least they were sticking up for the friends. <laughs> uh, Only when the hobbits climbed up them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that got really nuts. 
<laughs> oh man, too yeah. bad Toriel's missing I, out on this. <laughs> I guess uh, you know the ants showed up just to, so they would have something to root for. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, they were barking orders all over the place. <laughs> oh. Poor things walking around with all that wood. Nowhere to yeah. go. Yeah, they couldn't <laughs> they can just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this battle is going on. It says the assault on the gates were redoubled. Against the deeping wall, the hosts of Isengard roared like a sea. I love his imagery. Orcs and yes. hunters swarmed from its feet from end to end. Ropes with grappling hooks were hurled over the parapet faster than men could cut them or fling them back. Hundreds of long ladders were lifted up. And it says three times Aragorn and Aemir rallied them, the people of Rohan. And three times Andural flamed in a desperate charge. Yay! I love these men. I love the imagery. It's just amazing what he put into words. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we're we're gonna get there, Huffle Mama, about the ants, and um, I think Gandalf went to get them. Uh, I'd support a uh, you, pur you purchasing book if you don't want to ask my folks to borrow their copy. Oh, I see, they're having some conversation among themselves. Okay, that's great. Yes, and we love that. Yes, we love that. Precious. One point that they make also in the book is that the the deep. Uh, the the Hornberg rather had never known defeat, and they kept saying, "No, it's never known defeat." Yeah. So the minstrels say, "said Aemir." Then let us defend it, says Aragorn and Hope. And even as they spoke, there came a blare of trumpets, and the bad guys were coming in. Devilry of Saruman, said Aragorn. And they're like, things go ill, my friends. And they're like, you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you dumbass. <laughs> Glad you're here to tell us these things. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> but I love the imagery. Because you can see the battle happening. You can see it. The It's like he's painting pictures. And every time Ar Legolas just keeps saying, I must go and seek some arrows. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps uh keeps coming up short. Yeah, it's like he's, it's like he's working for tips. Hey. <laughs> oh my oh, dear. dear. <laughs> you see, who's to say that there's not diversity or I don't know diversity of porn <laughs> in here yes <laughs> there's something for everyone in these books just saying <laughs> there's something for everybody and, and this is we haven't even gotten to Faramir yet okay unlucky has right. gotta go thank you thank you and thank you for saying to subscribe yes and Aww. if you don't follow her on Twitter you, uh, I think I retweeted her Aragorn if you want to see her Aragorn doll that she crocheted which is really cool so things are sucking, and they just keep saying, oh, no, where's the dawn? And Aragorn's like, wait for the dawn. But meanwhile, Theodorn, Theoden says, it is said that the Hornburg has never fallen to assault, but now my heart is doubtful. And then he goes on, the end will not be long, but I will not end here, taken like an old badger in a trap. When dawn comes, I will bid men sound Helm's horn, and I will ride forth. Will you ride with me then, son of Arathorn? Maybe we shall cleave a road or make such an end as will be worth a song. And Aragorn goes, I will ride with you. Boom! Also, yes. I love again, that. With the, again with the fucking songs. <laughs> Well, they, they just said they would do it, but there, there's no yeah. song there. <laughs> not yet. It, it, well, not yet. I, I would almost agree with you, Steve, if they had stopped at that moment and started to sing, but they did not. That is a good example of a line that they gave to Aragorn instead of Theoden, and I thought it was far more badass in the book, of course, with Theoden saying it, because he's thinking, this sucks, we done, but you know what? We shall not give well, up. Wait a minute. Theoden said it in the movie. 
Yes. No. Right? What, well, he said that. No, but Aragorn was the one that said, like, ride with me. Like, Aragorn yeah, and, was the and, one that said the ride with me. Instead yeah, of then Theoden. Theoden. Theoden did the rest. Fair point. I'm just saying I really liked it that Theoden was all, will you ride with me then, <clears throat> Arathorn? So that even though he was feeling a little bit that he was the one who gave the invitation to Aragorn, and then Aragorn's like, I will ride with you. Yeah, I think that they made Theoden look a little bit more... I don't know if I want to say narcissistic, but, but he just, I don't even know how else to say this, but more of a dick in the movie than like in the books. In the books, I feel like Theoden was more helpful and he really wanted to, you know, partner with Gondor. But in the movies, you just feel like he's so cold towards Aragorn a lot. And especially mm -hmm. in the two towers. And it's like, dude, he's not here to steal your throne. You know, just yeah, calm down. It's, it's like they're um, in the movie, in the movies, it's like he's almost afraid Aragorn will steal his thunder because they kind of uh, Saruman says it too, that it wasn't Aylmer who won at Helm's Deep, it was Aragorn, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Precisely, yeah. And, and fair point to you, Stig, about what you said about the rest of the speech. Here it does pause, not for a song, but <laughs> for a parlay. This was not in the movie at all. Um, I loved it. Aragorn goes down for a parlay, and the orcs are yelling and jeering, "Come down, come down! If you want to speak to us." <laughs> I added the I added the dumb laugh. Bring out your <laughs> king, and then they go, "We are the fighty Urukai," and they say that twice. I just keep imagining that's like a high school football team like it's a, a battle shout right or like yeah right, well, like it cheer. takes at least it takes at least two to fight <laughs> true <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know we're the fighting era um fighting Urukai, and uh, Urukai rather and Aragorn goes I looked out to see the dawn what of the dawn they jeered <laughs> <laughs> what of the dawn okay I, I'm adding the dumb laugh the laughter is not in there <laughs> and Aragorn's no one knows what the new day shall bring him so he's taunting him them, he knows that uh, what's his face Gandalf is going to come or at least he has hope that he does imagine if Gandalf didn't show up wouldn't he feel dumb right before they all get yeah, slaughtered he, he would yeah. feel dead actually I wouldn't feel at all because he'd be dead. And then the third book would be called The King That Never Returned. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, the, well, yeah, no. I was going to say the, the victory of Mordor. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> the rise of Mordor. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> And then they're like, get down, or we will shoot you from the wall. This is no parlay. <laughs> it's like, I have this to say. No enemy has yet taken the Hornburg. Depart, or not one of you will be spared. You do not know your peril. And so great a power and royalty was revealed in Aragorn as he stood there alone above the ruined gate that many of the wild men paused and looked back over their shoulders. And then Aragorn leapt down and there was a roar and a blast of fire. As the, barric the barricade was scattered as if by a thunderbolt. And even as the gate fell and the orcs about it yelled, preparing to charge, a murmur arose around them, skip, 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 because from the tower above, the sound of the great horn of Helm rang out. Mm. Yes. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this on the audiobook. I'm like cheering again. It it was just so fast. And all that, that sound trilled, Helm, Helm, the writers shouted, Helm for Theoden King. Fourth Aer Lingus, and down they come. Oh, I don't know. Awesome. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, they like the dumb laugh. Honk. Look, he's God. That's half the truth. Uh, the orcs that invaded the fortress, it's not the inner cave. Yeah, from a certain point of view. 
<laughs> they didn't uh, penetrate deep enough. Oh, <laughs> hey, they oh. didn't. They didn't go far enough into the helms deep. Yeah, they they, they couldn't because um, Legolas had uh, stroked his shaft all the way to the tip before he <laughs> let it fly anywhere. Oh my! <laughs> what was wrong with you? What? He's an archer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is this great serious moment. Yes, and Snort of Poopus is like fourth Aer Lingus. Yes, I feel very proud to be a member of Rohan, or at least I know <laughs> I have King Theoden. And then Theoden rode from Helm's Gate. I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just read what Sultan al said. Yeah. He, he, he finished way too early. Uh, the shaft was all gone. And there was a the, the competition between him and the dwarf got even stiffer. <laughs> at least at least up to the climax of the battle. I mean, it was way too much for Legolas to swallow that he lost <laughs> to a dwarf. Oh, my. <laughs> I think you broke, <laughs> Teresa. Bang! <laughs> uh, I, I, you're making me speak in tongues, Steve. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> what? I was, I was just chiming oh in God. with a story. <laughs> I didn't say anything wrong. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Basically, you know, the Legolas and Gimli won and the Twats lost. <laughs> <laughs> tr okay. I'm trying to get to this great, enormous point where the land had changed because as they're coming out, the trees showed up. Right, so where anyway. I'm sorry? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> where there was nothing there, there were suddenly trees. And Tangled, Bow, and Hori had their twisted roots were buried in the long grass. And darkness was underneath them. So... And then vainly, like the bad guys, vain, uh, crawled and clambered along the walls of the coombs, seeking to escape. And they could not. So they were being trapped by the trees. Because remember, the trees were coming and they were pissed. Yeah. No, they were uh, wood blocked. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what happened. So you... So you've got from one end, you've got King Theoden, and they're all screaming Aer Lingus and all sorts of other stuff. Then the trees come and and would block them. I almost said something else. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> and then meanwhile, there suddenly upon a ridge appeared a rider clad in white, shining in the rising sun book ending the darkness where we started this chapter behold the right white rider cried aragorn and then being captain obvious he goes gandalf is come again it's like really you think really he that made him oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> that puts a new meaning to the word white wizard really oh dear <laughs> I can't, I can't. Oh my god, I'm in tears. <laughs> I can't this. I'm just gonna put this up here because I can't. I don't did I say this? I don't remember saying this. Um okay. <laughs> We're talking about a great battle. Yeah. Well, oh, focus is on you know. <laughs> Oh gosh, and then right after he goes, Gandalf has come again. Legolas yeah. cries out, Mithrandir! Mithrandir! <laughs> 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 
Ja. Mm. <laughs> With exclamation points. <laughs> this is wizardry indeed. Oh no. And then he goes, come. <laughs> <laughs> I would look on this force. Look on the force. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess it's not a case of blink and you'll miss it, is it? <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> oh, no. The white rider was upon them, and the terror <laughs> of his coming filled the enemy with madness. Wow. Oh, dear. He, and then, you know, they're like, he really is that good. Oh my I'm goodness. never going to be able to read this chapter ever again. <laughs> then it says, Not with a straight face. <laughs> the wild men fell on their faces before him. Wow. That's, uh... <laughs> yes, guess they were quite eager. <laughs> <laughs> The orcs reeled and screamed. <laughs> yeah, because they had an because they had an orgasm. Oh no! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> Wailing, they passed before the waiting shadow of the trees, and from that shadow, none <laughs> ever came again. <laughs> oh, well. Like, like I, you know, like we said, it was a brutal battle, you know. Uh, wasn't very yeah. civilized. We're losing the <laughs> oh, no. No. Okay, they're coming back. Okay, maybe Ms. they're Martin internet. Muses was uh, choking in the background. That's called immersion. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> And that's actually the last line of this chapter. Thank God. I'm crying. Oh, my gosh. Tears are coming. For Damn you, Steve. Oh, my gosh. I, I know. <laughs> so that's the climax of the battle. See, I can't even say anything now. I mean, just, just forget it. I just give up. Um, <laughs> the insanity. The insanity. <laughs> okay. Someone actually has a... Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, oh Mama uh, has you, the fellow, but the fellow below has a has an even better comment. Actually, it ties into what you just said. Okay, okay. Huffle Mama says, "I think Legolas said he wanted to look on the suddenly appeared forest because it just appeared out of no place, so he thought it was some kind of spell." Yeah. Well, yes, I'm. That is what he thought, but apparently we're we all have something wrong with us uh, right now. <laughs> That's exactly no, was, what happened. And, well, and, you go. You read that, Steve. I can't. I can't breathe. Everyone loves a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what happens when when you happens when you're gushing over Aragorn all the time. <laughs> no comment. I just have no words. Yeah, I'm just putting up these comments. I can't even read these comments. I can't breathe. Okay, actually, the chat is trying to be serious and having great insights into this uh, battle, etc. Et yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with you two. I'm <laughs> talking about the battle and you just laugh. It's kind of uncool. <laughs> okay. So that's the Battle of Helm's Deep. And yep. all right, let's <laughs> not to be confused with Deep Helms, which is a common. <laughs> <connection>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Um, oh my, oh my, <laughs> maybe it's a good thing Lady Gravemaster couldn't make it today. <laughs> she, she, she would be oh man, she up. would be blushing so hard. All right, here we go. Here we go. Chapter eight. Oh my gosh. The road to Isengard. 
Um, I can't spell it. I can't even spell. I can't type. I can't read. Um, I, I guess Lethal must have gone to sleep, so he missed all of that. Yeah, uh, you can catch it on the. I think he said something like he'd be lurking, so he may have fallen asleep to uh, some interesting conversation. Yeah, so falling asleep I, I, to I, my uh, my, my I think, description. Uh, I, I think lurking was a typo. Oh, <laughs> no. oh no! What? <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, wonder or what? Who is coming next? Um, we like to go deep. Yes, we do. Salt and <laughs> uh, Jack Lumen, my helm goes deep. Yeah. He can't. I. My eyes have been opened to a new world I didn't know existed. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Jack Lumen, say friend and enter. <laughs> Man, oh, there's you some mean good ones in the uncle? chat. Oh no! Holy, oh, cow. No. <laughs> Holy moly! Okay. Well, <laughs> that was a very mature discussion of. Hmm. Helm's well, I guess mature in more than ways of one. Okay. Oh my gosh. Um, well, yeah, and uh, Dark has and, no and, words. Uh, and the competition, Legolas came up short. <laughs> so. I would think that would be Gimli. Oh, it wasn't. Well, no, but, yeah. but Gimli did win. Yeah, no, he won. But you know, height differential. But yeah. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they all have this big reunion and Gambling the Old and Amor, Summon of Amond, and Gimli the Dwarf. He uh, had about his head a linen band stained with blood, but his voice was loud and strong. 42, Master Legolas, he cried. <laughs> Alas, my axe is notched. How is it with you? And he goes, you have passed. Kind of childish to notch things like that, don't you think? Anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So everyone has this big, happy reunion. And then they all gazed with, at Gandalf will still greater wonder. Oh, because they're talking about the trees. <clears throat> okay. And here's what Gandalf says about the trees. He said, it is not wizardry. They're talking about whether or not it was power from Sauron, whether it was the bad guys. It's not wizardry, oh, but a power far older. A power that walked the earth before elf sang or hammer rang. And I am so sorry, Steve. He does break out into a stanza at this point. There you go. <laughs> Always singing. It goes, well, I don't know if he's saying it. He's it's just a stanza. Ear iron was found, or tree was hewn. When young was mountain under moon, ear ring was made, or rot was row. It walked the forest long ago. And Theoden's like, and what may be the answer to your riddle? So Theoden is a, the Steeg in this moment. It's like, what the f are you doing right now? <laughs> and then he said, if you would learn that, you should come with me to Isengard. To Isengard, they all cry. I shall return to isengard there we may see strange things so they're gonna go off to isengard and does gandalf actually know this about um does he know what happened with saravon what he's gonna find or does he just suspect it because he's like yeah let's go to isengard uh i think we're gonna see something kind of cool or did he actually oh gosh yeah, i think he, he already kind of knew because remember he's saravon as saravon should have been so I'm yeah. pretty sure he had the knowledge already. Well, that's... some of the Ents might have said something, too. True. Yeah, it's possible. So... Because he had to remember he was Gandalf. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And they sit around and talk for a long time. And actually, not even a lot happens. Uh, they They do some rest. Oh, oh my gosh. But there's some really fun dialogue between Legolas and Gimli at this point. 
where they're talking about the caverns of Helm Deep. They are vast and beautiful. And Legolas goes, and I would give gold to be excused and double to be let out if I strayed in. And Gimli says, you have not seen. I forgive your jest, but you speak like a fool. Do you think those halls are fair? They are but hovels compared with the caverns I have seen here, etc. So they're just sitting around making out with the loving the caves. Mm. It's really bad phrasing there, Teresa. Really bad. Oh. Phrasing! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just. Oh, no, get Stig to see. Oh, Stig will never see. No. Um. All right, I'm t I'm trying to get get my brain cells back, making out whole. Oh great! Uh, oh hello, <laughs> cool Sasson. Sorry. Welcome to Smart Muses making out. Yeah, I can't even say anything. I, they're they're just waxing poetic, and and I think that this is also where they're laying the groundwork for what's going to happen with Legolas and Gimli at the end, where they decide what? they're going to go see all the cool stuff together. Oh yeah. What exactly were they waxing together? Waxing poetic, it is a term. Okay, thank you. Just wondering. <laughs> Stig, I, I've run out of laughter. I, I, I've i become you. I have no mirth left in me. Okay, Luffy's God says, Gandalf is winging it most of the time. If he had any sight to what was come, he would have sent Frodo on Eagle and there would be no trilogy. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. But I think they did actually explain the, the Eagle thing, didn't they? Well, didn't they say, was it in The Hobbit or was it in these books? I can't remember, but they really felt like it was degrading to be used as like a carriage for people. I thought I read that somewhere. Yeah. So it wasn't so much that maybe they all didn't want to use the eagles, but the eagles were like, no, screw you. Yeah. Get your we're own not ride. Your servants. Yeah. 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 And then uh, uh, Heffel Mama says, Theoden is thinking Gandalf intends them to attack Saruman, and he's not too happy about it at all. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, they, last, and he was even saying, hey, dude, we've got all these people that are tired. We've lost a lot of men. We can't go and have a big old battle. But um, yeah. Also, uh, Heffel Mama is spot on with this, because yeah. just because they can fly doesn't mean they'll fly safely. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's that's a good point. And you know, oh. you, you'd be able to see the eagles from miles away. So all they have to do is put all the orcs outside of, you know, the door into Mount Doom, and, and then, then shoot them down. Yeah, that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and just just, to say it loud. just just block the entrance to Mount Doom, really. And yeah, even if they manage to land, Frodo and Sam aren't gonna make it past two hundred orcs that are right outside the doorway. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, and Very what Helpful Mama had said was they could not have done that. They said also the Nazgul could have um, uh, shot them down. Yeah. <laughs> the eagles, sort of poopus. The eagles aren't a taxi service. <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> Soul Assassin, I thought the eagles didn't want to help because they're pricks <laughs> and didn't want to get corrupted by the ring. Well, well, would that really make them jerks or maybe a little bit smart? Um, oh gosh, unless they wing it. Hey, <laughs> yeah, well done, well done. We we endorse puns here here at Miss Martin Muses. Yes, we do. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Holy moly. Um and I'm if I'm correct, do they actually make it there? I mean, it takes them for friggin' ever. And this is longer than the daggone battle. Uh, but them getting um, over to the road to Isengard and Amor is saying as they get closer this has become a dreary place what sickness has befallen the river many fair things Saruman has destroyed has he devoured the springs of Isen too yeah and yeah. there's also a talk of a foul smell and yes. like a poison which it kind of goes um, to the pollution. Yeah, pollution. Although Tolkien did say it wasn't allegory for anything, so I guess yeah. pollution in this case is you know dark magic, I suppose. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like everything's poisoned by like evil, I guess, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and to shape, yeah, and to your point, yes, he did not like uh, allegory. He de he despised it, though. He did concede that some of the these points would be applicable, perhaps, to his work because there's always applicability in anything that people can bring with it. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you, Huffle Mama. She's asking me, am I breathing? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, Jack Lumen. Stieg is surprisingly composed. It's Miss Muses and Rennie, Rennie who are losing it. Yeah. Well, he's he's got that I, stoic thing. Going. I was trying to yeah. stick to the topic. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, Get in comedy, I feel like you're the... Um, I don't know how else to say this, but this straight is man. an actual term, the straight man. So you're the one that does it with like a plain, like straight face. And we're the ones that just lose our crap, like laughing, you know? So. I yeah. don't yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, all right. And, and then there's a big old description of Isengard I don't think it's not quite necessary to look at it in detail but since we'd never visited Isengard until this point yeah he's telling us what the hell this place looks like I think it's pretty cool mm -hmm. pretty cool to hear that description also uh they got Isengard pretty spot on yes in the, in the movies Mm -hmm. um, they even used one of the artworks that Alan Lee did, I believe. Yes, because uh, the they asked the him to finish itself. it. Yeah, because he had he had only done the half of it. They couldn't see the top. I thought that was really cool, and it just fit the description perfectly for me. Yeah, they wanted him to uh, erect the tower fully, so they could draw <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, sweet. <laughs> Oh, okay. And then one of my favorite parts of this end after Helm's Deep is you have the quote unquote door wardens that are waiting for them. It's Marion Pippin. <laughs> Yay! Um, so we hadn't seen them since they got kidnapped, and that really sad they happened with Boromir and everything. Yeah, because they don't really, like, in the books, you're right. They don't really go into the Ents battle as much as they go into the trees, like, you know, going after mm -hmm. the orcs. But you don't really get to see the Ents fighting at Isengard. It's just no, implied no. because it's already over and done with after the Battle of Helm's Deep. Yeah, we we see the aftermath. So it, yeah. it's left to our imagination. Yeah, Luffy's God said, don't we get some Isengard earlier when Saruman captures Gandalf? Sort of. It yeah. was told in a flashback. I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah, yeah, but in, in, in the movie, we actually see it. Yeah, it, well, exactly. Yes, in the movie you do, but yes. Which actually creates a little plot hole. Because when Gandalf escaped, escapes on the eagle, and yeah. he doesn't bring his staff with him. And his hat is missing, too. But when he's at uh, Rivendell, his staff and... Uh, hats are magically returned well see but you don't know that his staff isn't retractable and that his hat wasn't folded up and put in his cloak you mean that's it's, the only it's, thing i can do to justify it. <laughs> it it's well uh saruman grabbed his staff though <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right yeah and then he sent gandalf all the way up to the tip and uh, <laughs> then he sit there all soaked <laughs> <laughs> okay but no but this is really funny and really cute because they say welcome my lords to isengard we are the door wardens mariotic son of blah 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 and my companion who alas is overcome with weariness and i think probably passed out from i think they were drunk. that means he's actually high i think Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's smoking the pipe weed. Yeah, it, it it pretty much means that I think. Yeah, because that because um, uh, they 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 kept uh, there's a reference to Saruman and Radagast in um, uh, the Council of Elrond, I think in in the in the book, and he keeps saying that you know the 
pipe weed and mushrooms and stuff have slowed get uh, well, I guess it's mind or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. There we go. Um, and then they said the Lord Saruman is within, but at the moment he is closeted with one warm tongue, or doubtless he would be here to welcome them. And then Gandalf starts laughing. It's just a really cute reunion. And then you've got hmm. Gimli there. And Gimli starts to get pissed off because he's like, well, what about your companions? What about Legolas and me, you rascals, you woolly footed and wool painted truants a fine hunt you have led us <laughs> yeah two uh, and it goes on 200 leagues through fetid forest battle of death to rescue you and we find you feasting and idling and smoking smoking where did you come by the weed you villains <laughs> And then Legolas goes, you speak for me, Gimli, though I would sooner learn how they came by the wine. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Because oh, didn't yeah, they uh, make wine where Legolas was from? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, and elves are very snobby, so they probably only drink wine. Yeah, true. The finest one. But this is also so nice because it's a reunion of the fellowship in a way of course minus frodo and pippin and it's so Boromir. fun to see them well he's dead oh so you can't I know. Well, okay. <laughs> okay you're like i'm glad to see you tell um tell us these things but it's just nice to see them all back together and they're joking and they're just so happy to see each other and then theoden is kind of there it's like oh hi Nice to meet you and all that. And then later, Pippin says, so that is the king of Rohan. A very fine old fellow. Very polite. And that's how the chapter ends. Yeah. I love it. I love it. These guys, um, they... You know they what? Have... You, 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 would, you would think the hobbits would be better uh, with small talk. Hey! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I will say, uh, I think Theoden was a lot more friendly when he met Merry and Pippin in the book than the movie as well. <laughs> I thought that was nice. He seemed a lot more welcoming, so to speak. Yeah, just seems so cold in the movies, and I, I don't know. I guess they did that so whenever he showed up to the final battle, it was more of a redemption. But it just, you know, makes you kind of like not like his character so much when you watch the movies so he's a bit douchey uh, yeah. but I, I do understand it was like they were saving it for the return of the king especially when you see how warm he is with eowyn uh and all that i think though they could have gotten that across without making him sound like a douchebag yeah i think it. so too no yeah um, and then say, uh, Luffy's God says, wasn't Legolas a tree elf? They got their wine from the town, didn't they? Oh, uh, I actually don't recall. Yeah, Legolas is from Mirkwood. Yep. You know? uh, yeah, you know, Bilbo and company, you know, used their wine barrels to escape. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, but I think, did they make it? I think he's saying, did they get it from the town or did they make it? Uh, that's what I'm not sure. No, they, they were, they were uh, sending it to Lake Town. Okay, so um, the elves did um, make it. Yeah, down, yeah, down river. Okay. So Saruman right. intercepted it, you're saying? No. This oh, is okay. different wine. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, you know, in The Hobbit. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, PCAT says, I would like to applaud Miss Martin and Steve for their class. I came here for a wholesome discussion on Lord of the Rings. Oh, come on. As it happens whenever. <laughs> Always blaming it on you. Think yeah. Yeah, he's the one yeah. who brought it down. I, uh, I, 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 I wasn't going to say anything, but since he said it first. No, yeah, sorry. right. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of poop is Cuber says, having a little lighthearted hobbit talk was a nice break for the seriousness of the preceding chapters. Yes. I yeah, I agree with to, that. Yeah, and there's there's some more of that as well um, in the next few chapters, but this will be ending our book discussion for today, and probably what we'll do for the next time, we'll do the next three together, because I think they go together. The Flotsam and Jetsam, the Voice of Saruman, 
and the Palantir. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so those tie very well together. And Which then once we are... Them, almost all of that was left out of the um, uh, cinematic version. Of yeah. The movie. And, True. And they sucked for it, you know. Uh, Chris, Christopher Lee was not happy. Well, yeah, because uh, it was a big chunk of the story. And it's a vital chunk of the story. Yeah. Yeah. They screwed him without kissing him in many ways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, poor Christopher <laughs> Lee. Um, oh, he, probably uh, felt, he probably felt as if he had been at Helm's Deep. <laughs> in the <laughs> cave. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, uh, blaming Rennie. Hmm, that's not what I remember. Stretch has said. Elsa Long says, uh, Miss Martin Muse is incorrect. The lakemen shipped the barrels up the river to the elves and they dumped the barrels into the river when they were awful. There you go. I do oh, not yes. recall. It's been a dang. No, no, she, yeah, she, is, she is right, actually. Yes. So there you go. Yeah, it's been quite a while since I've read the Hobbit book, but yes, yeah, certainly I do stand corrected. Oh, Snort Poop says, contrary to the movies, elves can get drunk. Yes. Yes. Well, because they're drunk in The Hobbit. Yet yeah. Yeah. Legolas can't be drunk in uh, The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, because that's uh, how they escaped kind of a... Markwood, right? Is the elves got drunk off the wine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there. So screw you all. All you non-elf drunken haters. Yeah. Um, Continuity issue that, uh, well, the the fact that Legolas can't drink is only in the movie. I think. Well, well he can drink, but he doesn't get drunk. That's yeah, something that's... Uh, Peter Jackson added for the fun of it. But little continuity issue, though. Yeah. With the Hobbit. True. Yeah. Yeah. The, I like the movies, but they have their flaws. They certainly do have their flaws. Um, yeah, absolutely. And not just wine. The king's wine. Okay. All right. Every every movie has some flaws or something. It's it, you know, as long as it's not a massive plot hole, it's completely fine. You know. Yeah. There's it's very very rare that anything is absolutely um, perfection. <sighs> wow. Okay. I mean, every every muscle in my body is hurting right now. I mean that that I. I yeah. Was, that was like a full bodied laugh. Yeah, that same look. here. Oh. I think wow. I'm dehydrated from uh, crying from laughing. <laughs> yeah, Steve, <laughs> yeah, you got us dehydrated. How dare you? Yeah, um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that is going to end <laughs> our discussion i can't even say what i was gonna say i was gonna say a deep discussion of the chapters but i can't even say that anymore i mean and, uh, it's like my Renny, deep dive yeah and the uh, <laughs> red rennie and miss martin owes me a uh, dehydration oh dear <laughs> i'm not I did okay be, be... Um, okay, yeah, I think I know what you mean, but I think oh yeah. hell, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Um and there's some uh, chat going on in the chat about uh Christopher Lee, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, there was a uh, a lot of discussion and Christopher Lee certainly knew his stuff and i believe he was the only one who actually met J.R. tolkien am i correct speaking on that yes he, he had met him and uh tolkien had given him his blessing to play gandalf if they ever made um a movie based on the books oh, that's interesting uh, little did he know uh, he would be saruman christopher lee is also in part to blame for arwen not showing up at helm's deep but she nice. wasn't in Helm's Deep in the book either. So, I mean, exactly. it's not a big deal. It, yeah. Yep. Peter Jackson wanted to put her there because they wanted Orwin to, you know, do stuff. I um, mean, I get that, but yeah, I'm glad they didn't do that. Because didn't he say, I want to say in an interview, he said he read the books every year. He did it once yeah, a year. Think, yeah. Could, yeah. He, he absolutely did. So, 
you know, the fact that sometimes they just didn't listen to him, you know, kind of could be irritating. And I could see why he would get mad because, you know, you know, the detail in and out and you see people kind of running away from that. It's like, no, 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 we need to bring it back this way. So I appreciate him trying to preserve the canon. He was yeah. kind of gatekeeping Peter yeah. Jackson, which is, uh, oh. I, I'm glad he did because um, with Christopher Lee, it did not come from a bad place. It came from a, you know, because he was a massive fan of it. He wanted Absolutely. it to be done right. Yeah. Absolutely. A great deal of love for the source material. They did go as far as filming the scenes at Helm's Deep, some of them with Arwen, I recall, from the appendices they showed it but yeah i think everyone is really glad <sighs> everyone is really glad Saruman. that it turned out the way it was yeah yeah well on so many different levels the perfect Saruman, but also the fact that they didn't do arwen and obviously they were still struggling with how to make arwen a little more present when they get got to return to the king where they pulled out of their butt arwen's dying and i remember going what and yeah. everyone here is like what they never explained that i think that they were trying to do something i don't know it's just stupid give her like uh, give some sort of purpose to aragorn to because isn't that what kind of convinced him in the movies to go to the to the what is it the road that led to the king of the dead i think yeah. he, it took uh what's his name golly i can't even think today man elrond. three hours of sleep thank you elrond to convince him hey my daughter's dying this is the only way to save her and it's like oh yeah and then he gives him andoril and all this stuff and so it just i guess was a way for people who didn't read the books to see aragorn's purpose rather than aragorn to just do what he was supposed to do and you know being the king that he is you know so i mean i get it it was difficult because I think that they wanted us to feel like, how do I say this? They wanted us to feel like Arwen was more than she was because he was she was going to be the one that was going to not just marry Aragorn, but I think they believed that they were missing the romance that... Yeah was needed i don't know and they and since they cast Liv tyler in it it was hard to just have her be a side character I mean, maybe they wouldn't have felt that need if they just had some random actress chick i, I honestly don't know maybe yeah do you but know who in, was supposed to play galadriel mm -mm. Uh, uh lucy lawless she was really she was the first choice, but I think she was pregnant at the time. That just oh. doesn't seem to fit oh, for she, me. She, I guess because I'm too used to Kate Blanchett. Oh, it's it's because they um, wanted to use as many actors from New Zealand as possible. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, no, that and I, I'm glad they didn't because Gladriel, I think, needed to really have that ethereal, otherworldly feel, and I'm not entirely sure. Well, maybe she could have pulled it off. Cause well, I think we would have been too distracted by all the boobage. But yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody would have been like, oh, that's Xena. She's hot. And, you know, instead of like, oh, Galadriel has this like ethereal presence, like you said. So, yeah, I I'm really glad that they did not go that route. Yeah. It's not a poopus. He's a, not a fan of Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens. They actually thought they were better writers than Tolkien, and Jackson indulged them too much, in my humble opinion. Um, yeah, but yeah. Well, in their defense, though, that it, it was a difficult job they had, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they also said in their commentary, if I'm correct, that they had to sell it to the studios. And that some of that aspect, they were like, okay, you know, they're gonna, they wanted to have a romance in there. We had to do some of that to appease yeah. them. For some reason, Hollywood seems to think that women won't like stuff if it doesn't have a romance in it. No, exactly. I love, I prefer like action and I like to see, you know, I like to see battles and fights and stuff like that. I don't mm -hmm. have to see romance all the time. Yeah. You know, I'll never say no to romance, but. Aragorn and Arwen didn't 
appeal to me necessarily because it it wasn't like a really good romance. Of course, you know I'll, how I feel about Faramir and Eowyn. Oh, yeah. I felt at the same time that they actually had a romance and they kind of gave that the shaft. It's like, wait a second, people, you know, you did have, you wanted to have a romance. They did insert the scenes in the extended edition, but not in the theatrical edi edition. It's like, yeah, they just know. kind of alluded to it. You're right. In the theatrical edition, they just kind of like had them kind of flirting, you know, at the end or giving each other the Buffalo eye, but well, you didn't yeah, really it was, know. It was at the, yeah. At the coronation, they were just smiling yeah. and they were standing together. But I, I thought thought it was very beautiful the way they did it in the in the in the in the Return of the King extended edition, and it would only have been a few more extra minutes. So I was kind of pissed. Like, listen, you got a romance, throw that in. But good point, Steak. It it was incidental to the rest of the story, and that's what even Tolkien said. He's he he it, he wasn't against romance. He just just wasn't focused on the story at hand. Yeah. Now, I and we say know I, we can write romance because holy yeah. crap, we're not there yet, and we're going to spend five weeks of a five week long stream on the chapter "The Steward and the King" because that was a very romantic chapter. So Tolkien is capable of writing good romance, but absolutely, it was, just wasn't you know meant to be because he was very in love with his wife. Oh okay. and... yes, yeah. I will say I, I did kind of like the whole Aragorn and Arwen thing in the movies just because he compared them to Beren and Luthien. And I just thought that was a great love story. So I was really excited to see them together, but I didn't like what they did with it in Return of the King with the whole her fate is now tied to the ring. I didn't yeah. think that that fit well for me, but well not only did it not fit well, it's like where the hell did this come from? <laughs> exactly. Since when does an elf, you know, get tied to like you know I, I don't know it just didn't yeah it didn't make sense absolutely yeah, yeah. uh sir poopus is saying you get the Ar aragorn arwen romance in the appendix it's very bittersweet yes and that was one of the best arwen aragorn sequences that they had in the two towers where they showed the appendix and they did it with in the context of her father saying this is what's going to happen that was yeah. very well filmed that that was some good stuff oh yeah that that broke my heart because i'm like no that really does happen this is so sad you know Fair. she loved him you know this um yeah well ex exactly and so that was a that was very well done so you knew that they were all capable of it and I didn't mind the thing that they added in the Fellowship of the Ring where you just see them kind of talking and she gives them the little necklace. You know, that was all made up just for the thing. Yeah. Arwen. Oh, did I accidentally say Faramir and Arwen? I, I said Far Faramir and Eowyn. Uh, some, uh, or it, maybe it's a typo there. <laughs> yeah, because F Faramir and Eowyn, I thought that that was a, a very good way to tie up both of their stories. J.R. Yeah. wrote that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And so, my gosh, I'm ex I'm exhausted. This uh, oh, okay, it was your bad because sometimes I have been known to do that, Hustle Mama, where I've accidentally called A O N R O N R and A O N. And yeah. my mother, who had never read the books, was even saying, "Why does his names all sound the same?" Because you had A O N R O N Amer, and they didn't they had read they have blah blah. <laughs> yeah, you know, after a while, it's like, you know, sometimes I'll like mix up the names. And I'm like, wait, 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 no, this person, but it sounds so much alike, or, you know, the letters are just like one different or something. And it's like, oops, wrong person. So. Exactly. Yeah. Sam and Rose, of course. Yes. And Tolkien himself said in his letters that that is a quintessential romance for him, which is why it's such BS when they're trying to say, no, she was his beard. It's like, no, she wasn't. No. Yeah, no, that's no, not cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be wrapping this up and probably having to take a 10 hour nap because that exhausted me. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I don't, I haven't laughed like that in years and I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, so Stieg, tell us when, where, how, and why we can find you. Uh, OG Star Wars on Thursdays and Jade Shadow on Fridays and here most Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, thank you. Estique has a new top five. If you are a fan of his, it is very disturbing and very funny. So uh, if you if you <laughs> want another laugh, go right over to Steaks and see his newest top five. How about you, Princess <laughs> Renny? I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm, no, you're good. I, my brain cells have fallen out of my body through trying to do that reading of Helm's Deep. Where can we find you? When, where, how, why, and why is it important? Uh, typically Saturdays episode. between 4 and 5 p.m. Central on Mr. Brown Alliance. Uh, today we are discussing the original Ghostbusters. And then, um, you know, just here and there. And when Miss Martin Muses is kind enough to invite me on to talk books, I shall, I shall be uh, here when I can. Um, but yeah, just enjoy talking about the stuff that you love. This is always a blast. I love it. Thank you so much, Teresa and Steak. Well, thank you for being here. And of course, you can find me here in Miss Martin Muses, where I talk about what makes me laugh, makes me cry, makes me happy, makes me sad, or just really ticks me off. And right now, of course, it's two towers. At the same same bat time, same bat channel, the second, third, and fourth week of the month also my triple review is going to be this tuesday where myself and maury and eddie and perhaps some other guests will be discussing three thanksgiving movies it will be the planes trains and automobiles the uh, snoopy thanksgiving special the charlie brown one and a horror slasher film uh, that i can't even remember the name it's so bad that it's so good so please stay tuned on my Twitter for that. Also, I have a new series running for the uh, Once Upon a Time with Minority Home and Biggles.net where we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of Once Upon a Time. And as always, thank you. Thank you for all of you in the chat. You all are fantastic. Best chat ever. Add so much detail and keep us honest. Uh, thank you, Joaquim, Sultan, Snorta Poopus Kuber, Heck44, my mod who napped through the discussion. You're fired. Aww, no, you're not. You're awesome. Meanie. No. <laughs> hey, it's okay to nap. I adore snapping. Thank you. Uh, Keck's the best. Does a great job here as my uh, modding for me. Huffle Mama, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your information. Um, we had Darius Munchausen. Uh, we had Lethal Lightning, who apparently, uh, I think we also sent him off to sleep down under. He's living in the future. P. Cat, and if Alifia's God. And if I miss anyone, please, my sincere apologies. It is unintentional. I do appreciate you. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. And be certain, be certain, have a nice day, and be certain to not read the Battle of Helm's Deep out loud. <laughs>